And what was that from Tuesday? I, I, uh... Hey, yo, start me a new playlist. I got a new idea, man. Just start me a new playlist right quick. New playlist? Uh, I just had this. I know I was watching that video. I think Wavy Wayne said command shift. No. Oh, man, I hope he's not getting impatient. Ah, uh, dang, that's not right. It's got to be control P. Control P? No. You're not done yet? I forgot my whole idea now. You took too long. Hey, man, taking too long in the studio can really kill the vibe and possibly cause you to lose a client, especially if they work with an editing ninja. What's up audio engineers, producers, and artists? I am Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com and this YouTube channel is all about helping you to record and mix smarter and faster. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the top 10 most useful shortcuts in Pro Tools. I find these to be the most useful because when you're working in a session, you wanna be able to move quickly, especially doing recording, editing tasks, and anything that's dealing with your client. When you have a client in the studio with you, it is so important to be efficient. Yes, you are working hourly, but do you really wanna just be milking them because you are inefficient? When they go to work with another engineer that's a lot faster, maybe because they're Pro Tools certified, when they go, speaking of that too, I also have a, a Pro Tools certification course that's enrolling right now if you wanna tap in. But once they work with a client, with the engineer, once your client works with an engineer, who is fast and efficient, they're not gonna wanna work with you again. Trust me, I know from firsthand experience. There's been times to where an engineer has been sick, I had to go sit in for them, and I ended up becoming the permanent engineer, the head engineer on that project, just because of my speed and efficiency in Pro Tools. These 10 shortcuts are shortcuts that everybody who uses Pro Tools should absolutely know, so let's go ahead and jump right in so I can show you how they work. By now, you probably know that in Pro Tools, you can simply go right up to the file menu and choose save or save as to update the latest copy of your session. By choosing save, the shortcut is command S. If you choose save as, that shortcut is control command S. Now, what are the differences between doing a standard save command S and a save as troll command S? <laughs> well, one of them, when you just do a save a regular save by hitting Command S, which I recommend that you do after every single move that you wanna save, whether that's making a selection, Command S, moving a fader, Command S, muting a track, Command S, record pass, Command S, everything that you wanna keep, Command S. But if you're gonna do some major changes to the session and you're not sure that you wanna keep it or you just wanna kinda track your progress as you move along, doing a save as will actually create a new Pro Tools session file so that you can also refer back to this one. So if for some reason I was going to do something like, you know, change the arrangement, I could hit Control uh, Command S to do a save as, and then let's just call this the 2.0 session. And then if I copied and duplicated a bunch of stuff around this session differently and later decided, hey, I don't like this, I can always go back to that original file and just keep working from there. So the differences between a save as control command S is that the standard save updates the current copy of the PTX while the save as is going to allow you to save a new copy of the session file under a new name or a location. And I use that most often whenever I am making big changes in my session. So after you've gotten done saving, the next thing you probably gonna wanna take a look at is gonna be recording. Now, there are some slow ways that we can start recording in Pro Tools and you might know those already, but did you know that there are actually three shortcuts that you can use to start instantly recording in Pro Tools? Yeah, not one, not two, but three handy shortcuts that actually make um, a lot of sense depending on what system you're using to run your Pro Tools on. So let's run down those three shortcuts. After you record enable a track, right, and that track is record enabled, you can hit Command S or Control S if you're on a PC. You can hit Numeric 3 on your Numeric keypad or F12. Now, why are there so many different ways like hitting Command S to start recording? or hit numeric three to start recording, or even hitting F12. 
<laughs> to start recording. Well, the reason is because different keyboards and different operating systems make different uses of these controls. So your workflow might be a little bit different. For one example, when I'm working on my laptop, I don't have a numeric keypad. So the numeric three to start recording is out the picture for me. For a lot of us, if you are working on a Mac and you haven't changed your system preferences, whenever you hit the command and space bar, that will open up a spotlight search. And also, for some of us also on Macs, we don't even have access to these function keys because Apple has routed those to all different kinds of things. So depending on which system you are working on, you can choose any one of those shortcuts between Command S, Numeric 3, and of course F12 to start recording if that hasn't already been mapped for something else. I definitely recommend that you use these to start recording and the dope thing is is that if you are in quick punch mode in Pro Tools, you can use these shortcuts to punch in and punch out and punch in and punch out without ever having to stop the playback. Once you're doing a lot of recording in your session, you're probably also going to need to make some new tracks. Pro Tools has some creative ways to create new tracks that make it very easy and fluid for you to continue what you're doing in your session. Let me show you a couple of them. One of them that you probably already know, and then I have some that you probably don't know. So, of course, you can always go up to the track menu and hit new. This shortcut is shift command N. If I want to make new short new tracks, I can hit shift command N open up my new track dialog box and I can even use shortcuts inside this dialog box to determine the width of the tracks that I'm working with and also the type of track that I am choosing, okay? So to change the width, if I hold Command on my Mac or Control on the PC, and in this case, since I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna hold Command and use my left and right arrow keys. This will allow me to change the different track width. So whether I'm working with mono, stereo, 7.1 or above, right, I can choose that track width. I can also hold the command key and use the up and down arrows to change the type of track that I'm gonna be creating, all right? And then of course, if I hit command N again, I can uh, create another row and create multiple types of tracks all at one time. I'm gonna go over to the mix window to show y'all this next track, right? Pro Tools has a dope feature um, that was uh, recently added to, that allows you to double click in the blank space in either the mix or the edit window. And by doing this, a track the same width and same type as the track previous will be created. So all I gotta do to, as I'm recording, if I'm doing a recording session, my record track here at the end of my session, all I have to do is double click in the blank area and Pro Tools will give me another track. This also works here in the edit window as well. Just by double clicking in that blank area, you can create a new track of the same width and type as the previous track. Now for all my Pro Tools certified students out there and the students that are currently enrolled in my Pro Tools certification class, we know that there are even more double click shortcuts, man. So if y'all wanna learn all of those double click shortcuts and learn how to actually um, create all the different track types simply by double clicking and adding a modifier, make sure y'all tap into my Pro Tools certification course which is enrolling right now. So let's continue with my list of the top 10 most useful shortcuts. So the, we have so far covered uh, saving, recording, and making new tracks. Let's go over to my edit window for this next part. In this next part, I'm gonna be talking about creating playlists, creating new playlists. Basically what a playlist is, playlist is a feature that allows you to have multiple different versions of takes or multiple different versions of arrangements or clips on a single track and be able to access them all. So it's kind of like it's putting them in the background, right? Right now, what we're looking at on this vocal track is my main playlist. One dope feature that I love is that while I'm recording, I can create new playlists on the fly simply by hitting control and using the backslash, okay? So that's control and backslash. And if you notice, I actually just created a new playlist. This will allow me to record new clips, new audio on this same track and still have the other playlist intact. I can just go back to my um, playlist selector right here to the right of the track's nameplate. And then if I go to my original playlist, you can see this is where we started. So again, if I'm on a PC, that shortcut is gonna be the Windows key and the backslash key. Um, otherwise on Mac, it's gonna be control backslash. You can also create duplicate playlists as well. 
So if I wanted to create a playlist, let's say I like what I have here, but I want to experiment with some different edits on this same clip, but I want to keep what I have here um, to create a duplicate playlist instead of a new one. What you would do is hit control command and then hit the backslash. And if you notice, um, the little playlist number has changed, right? Every time I do that, now this is playlist five. And this will allow me to experiment with different arrangements of what's on this track and still have the ability to go back to the way that it was before I created the playlist. So creating a playlist is really dope. And I also like it because even if I start recording, I can create a new playlist as we are recording. So if I'm working with clients who are moving fast throughout the session, they want to quickly jump to the next uh, to the next take. Well, I don't have to spend time clicking over here, making a new playlist and then recording them. I can instantly start recording over that take that's already there and then just hold control, hit the backslash while I'm recording. And that whole other playlist has been saved uh, for me to refer to at a later time. All right, y'all, so the next shortcut on my top 10 most useful shortcuts list in Pro Tools is going to be simply zoom in, man. If you are going up to the uh, magnifying glass, the little zoomer tool here to zoom in and out, that's just causing you way too much time and slowing you down immensely. See, even look, my Pro Tools don't even want to do this. I don't know. My Pro Tools is like, bro, you tripping. We do not want to zoom like this. What are you doing with this tool? So. Here are the shortcuts that I like to use to zoom in and out. I like to use T to zoom in and R to zoom out. It's really simple. T to zoom in, R to zoom out. Now, in order for the one key shortcuts to work, like T to zoom in and R to zoom out, you need to go over to this little command keyboard focus right here, the little AZ button in the top right corner of your edit playlist section. You can make sure that's enabled here just by clicking it. And when that keyboard focus is enabled, that will allow you to use one key shortcuts like T to zoom in and R to zoom out. Another <laughs> one of my favorite, most useful shortcuts that I do all the time is going to be the do to all function and also the do to selected function. So to do to all, basically it sounds exactly what it says. If I hold down the option key on a Mac or that's the alt key on a PC, by holding this down, this will allow me to do whatever function that I'm selecting to all of the members in my session. For example, I can set a send to a certain bus to every single track in my session at the same time. I can record and enable every track at the same time or solo or mute every track at the same time simply by holding option when I do whatever it is that I'm going to do. So holding option and doing certain functions will apply that function to all members of this uh, of all compatible tracks in your session that includes like putting an insert setting up sins um all types of stuff so try it out and see where it works whenever you have to batch control multiple tracks try the do to all function now expanding on that do to all function right there is also a do to selected function in pro tools so whenever you have multiple tracks and you want to affect multiple tracks if you hold shift in option on a Mac or the shift and alt on a PC, this will enable the do to selected function. So by holding shift and option, this will allow me to mute just the tracks that I have selected or solo just the tracks that I have selected or remove this send only from the tracks that I have selected. So it works just like the do to all function, except by holding shift in, you are only affecting the selected tracks. All right, so this next shortcut is going to be actually a cluster of shortcuts, but I think it's super important for us all to know. And this is going to be very simple editing commands that you should definitely be always using shortcuts for. And it's going to be copy, paste, cut, and duplicate. Okay, copy. Copy means that you take a selection, hit Command C or Control C, go over to somewhere else and hit Command V to paste it, okay? So when you copy Command C, that selection has now been added to the clipboard, which is just this virtual memory that Pro Tools has. And then you can go anywhere else in your session and paste what you have copied. Now, a cut works the same way. Um, you can make a selection and hit Command X, all right? And that will 
cut or remove your selection, but it also places it on the clipboard and allows you to paste it. Now a clear command, um, which was just like hitting the delete key or uh, hitting command B, that's how you can clear, that simply just deletes it or, or clears it without pasting it to the clipboard. Um, but we also have the duplicate function. Duplicate is command D. Right? And by making a selection, you can command D and duplicate sections, which is very useful for arrangement and producing when you work in Pro Tools. Now, of course, all of these basic editing commands can be found by going up to the edit menu if you want to be slow about it. But if you want to be quick, try those shortcuts. Command X, Command C, Command V. That's cut, copy, paste. All right. And if you notice by looking down at your QWERTY keyboard, you will notice that um, and let's just add Command Z in there as well, because that's an important one, right? Command Z undo. Hopefully you know that, right? So if you you can actually use these also as one key shortcuts as long as your command focus is enabled to where you can just hit. Let's say I deleted this. I can just hit Z to undo. I can hit X to cut. I can hit V to to paste. I can hit C to copy, you know, and I can also just, um, yeah, that's it. Let's keep going on these shortcuts. I got a couple more. And again, these are my top 10 most useful Pro Tools shortcuts. There's a lot of them that we can go over. I actually have a video where I list about 100 of my favorite Pro Tools shortcuts, but this top 10 most useful. I use these on every single session and I think you should too. So one of them is good. The next one is going to be how to reset a parameter back to default. There's a simple way in Pro Tools that we can do this and all you have to do is hold the option key or alt if you're on a PC and click on that parameter and it'll reset it back into its default setting. So if you notice, I just got that pan back to the default by option clicking on it, getting that fader back up to default by option clicking on it. Even if I have a plugin and I change a setting, I can hold option and click on that plugin setting to get it back to its default setting. So any Thing that you want to reset back to default in Pro Tools, you can hold the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on your PC, click that parameter and it will reset it back to the default. For the next shortcut on my top 10 list, let's go back to the edit window and here I will talk about resizing tracks. So when you can easily resize a track in a few different ways, let's break down some of them. One of them, you can just use your mouse and go over to this little uh, amplitude scale area in the edit window and click on a track height to resize it. You can also go to the left of the track's nameplate and there's a little drop down menu where you can also click to resize tracks. You can even bring your cursor down to the bottom boundary of any track and drag up and down to resize it. But there's a shortcut as well that we can do using our keyboard. And again, the more we use our keyboard, the more we look like editing ninjas, the more that our clients need us, the more magical we look like we are working. Okay, so let's let's use these shortcuts. So I'm gonna go in and to resize this track, I'm simply gonna hold the control key and use my up and down arrows on my Mac. Now the track resizing is gonna depend on which track I have my edit selection on right so if I have an edit selection on this particular track once I'm holding control and using my up and down arrows to resize it affects that track only here's a bonus question how can I resize all the tracks in my session at once using this shortcut if you said by holding the option key then you're absolutely correct so I'm gonna hold control and include the option key so this happens to all the tracks and then I'm going to use my up and down arrows. Alright y'all, hopefully you've learned a lot in this video. I have just one more shortcut to show y'all on this top 10 and that's going to be to save and recall memory locations. Memory locations can be very very useful in a session especially when you have longer sessions or more uh, densely um, uh, populated sessions. Have a lot of tracks, have a long uh, arrangement, right? Knowing where you are in that arrangement by setting memory locations and markers can be very helpful. So the shortcuts to actually set a memory location is enter on the numeric keypad. So let me actually start this over. So like if I was in the beginning, I would hit enter on my numeric keypad and I would hit uh, intro on this song. That's memory location one. I come to another point, hit enter. We can call this verse. Okay, let's come to another point. We'll call this the hook, okay? Now, 
To recall these memory locations is very easy. So um, if I'm in the mix window, the reason I might want to have these memory locations, and I'm going to open up my memory locations window just so we can see. Um, here we go. When I open this up, you see I have these memory locations. And the beauty of setting these while I'm working is that I can continue to work in my mix window and navigate throughout my session um, and play different parts without having to go and jump back and forth to the edit window. So if you notice, as I'm clicking on each section, my playback cursor is jumping to the start of that section. So while I'm over in the mix window, I can click on these sections and then just play from any point in my session without having to go over to the edit window. Now, how can I recall these via a shortcut? It's really cool. It's kind of like a little Mortal Kombat cheat code, but all you got to do is hit period, the number of the memory location, and period again. So an example of that right now, we are on the intro. I'm going to move here just so you can see um, how it recalls. I'm going to hit period, one, period. And now I have just recalled my intro marker. I'm going to hit period two period to jump over to the verse, period three period to jump over to my chorus, and I can start playing from any of those sections. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. I hope you have found this helpful. I would love to know what are some of your most useful shortcuts. Did I leave any out? Drop down in the comments and let me know. Also, what new shortcuts have you discovered during this video? If any, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out wavywayne.com where I have a bunch of resources and tools to help you record and mix smarter and faster. Be dope.